Well, look at who's peering at us from the hole inside the termite mound. So it seems as though it's very evident she has spent the entire night here, and that means that there are definitely little cubs inside there. I'm 99.9% .9 convinced. Obviously, we can't be 100% until such time as we see a little face peering out of there, but her behavior and the fact that she is still here at this time of the day after a full night is indicative that there is definitely something behind there. And at first, I didn't even see her. She was so camouflaged in this dreary weather and she was sitting with her head down just grass poking up around her ears and it was difficult to see her you can see as we come back in this dreary kind of weather it's actually very difficult to see a leopard she's now standing up and really quite exposed and her chest is bright and white and we can see her very very clearly but she was most definitely very camouflaged at one point but she most she has to have cubs there's no other rhyme or reason for her to be inside a termite mound for this amount of time I mean remember she was in there yesterday it wasn't raining so it's not nothing to do with the weather but she spent the entire night sitting at this particular termite mound which means there must be something inside there girl are you going to show us your little ones how exciting is this this is the coolest thing in the whole world I, I'm in a way, I was I was a bit uh, jealous of James yesterday, but I did want him to actually see the cubs because it would be nice to know so that we can leave the area unscathed and not actually have to kind of give her any sort of reason to move. And so it would be nice just to get a sighting of the cubs and know for sure. But I think given the behavior that we're seeing right now, we can pretty much be certain that there is something going on here. I think that those cubs are still so small that she's not able to even call them out yet because I watched yesterday as she approached this den, there wasn't too much communication. She just silently went inside there. I believe some of you said that you heard a few squeaks coming from there, which is I suppose possible, but I doubt that she'll call them because I don't think they're even of that ability yet to be able to walk out of here. They're still blind. They're probably still wobbling all over the place. And so she would rather go inside that den than to actually have a situation where she's got to call them out and so whether or not we're going to see them just yet I don't think so I think we're gonna have a situation where we're going to have to wait a few weeks until she actually shows them to us maybe we're gonna get a situation where she's gonna be carrying them to another den or something like that but how exciting Kobe, who's 15 years old, you say on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited I am, am I about Tundi's new cubs? Well, Kobe, I'm probably 100 out of 10 at this stage. I'm super, super excited. Tundi is one of my, is my favorite female that we see in this area, and I've wanted her to den. I, I had kind of built it up over the last few months that I was 100% sure she was going to den here on Juma, and everybody said to me uh, they didn't think so they thought Torchwood was where she was going to go given that she has denned on Torchwood before and we know that she's denned more south of us and this is the first time she's ever will have had cubs on Juma and so for me it is a very very special thing and I'm super excited because it means that we're going to get far more frequent sightings of Tundi she should theoretically spend a lot of time in this area now we shouldn't see her moving and venturing very very far over this next kind of month or two and so it means the frequency of seeing my favorite girl is a lot more and so that's why and then also who doesn't love a little leopard cub they are the cutest little things in the whole world and watching the development of cubs as they go from these tiny little fluff balls with these bright colored eyes into the sort of sub adults where they're goofy much like what we've seen from Hosanna and then and Tumba and then you go through into a situation where they become these full-fledged adults and you get to then maybe see them breed one day if they are a female or male it depends on which one so it's just an amazing thing to be able to witness and and after kind of months of sort of thinking that she's been pregnant and, and hoping and hoping that she would den here, yeah, it's just a big, big, big kind of ball of excitement to be able to know that she is here and that for sure there is something going on. Like I say, I, I mean, I watched yesterday and I, for me, James was 100% right as soon as he saw her that it looked as though she had already given birth. It looked like a lot of milk sagging off her tummy. And so generally milk production is only just as they're about to drop or once they have already dropped their glitter, they have that milk production starting. You don't see it kind of when they're still pregnant. It's that the milk production is kicked in by the body as soon as she sort of gives birth or around giving birth now she's very alert and watching very carefully and that's because when we came this way there were a few impalas not too far away that were busy kind of walking around so maybe she spotted those guys and that's what she's looking at hello my girl are you a bit concerned 
What's interesting about Tandi and, and most of our leopards that we see and, and we talk about and, and, and my experience with leopards in terms of den sites is most of them favor riverbeds. Most of them go into thick, dense riverbed areas or rocky outcrops. But Tandi, in all the time that I've seen her, in fact, the, the litter where Wabi Yuza was born, the litter with um, Bahuti and the litter with... Um, Kuchava, they were all born in termite mounds. So she seems to favor a termite mound. It's obviously a recipe that she likes. She probably thinks it's a lot safer. The temperature is probably quite nice in there. And also at the end of the day, it's quite difficult for us to kind of actually see anything. So it's not like you're going to easily stumble upon this. And where she is here is absolutely perfect. You see, she's got a bit of foliage around the, the actual termite mound itself, which means that it's quite well hidden. It's not exactly like that entrance is completely open to anybody. And so I think she's actually chosen a fairly good one the only problem is is her proximity to a road so she's very close to a road she's not far off at all and which means there's going to be a lot of passing traffic in the form of leopards lions and hyenas because this particular road that we're on is one of the thoroughfare roads for tingana which hopefully shouldn't be a problem given that he should be the father of these cubs if she has in indeed given birth now it means she was mating with tingana roughly three months well just over three months ago and so that would then be a right time I think she would really try and lead him away. It's it's interesting because I've seen female leopards with male leopards twice at den sites and both times were different. So the, f the first time was a very aggressive, very kind of confrontational by the female. She hissed, she growled, she chased at that male, which led the male to just kind of, he wasn't going to have any of it. She wasn't in heat and he didn't feel like dealing with it and he walked off. The other male that she had, she, she became very flirty and almost as though she wanted to mate with him and slowly led him away from the den site. So it depends on, on the individual. I've also seen males lying at den sites. If you think of Anderson, Saleh, and Tiani, often Anderson was lying with Saleh and Tiani at the den site with with them and so it just depends on the female and, and, and whether or not that male was one she mated with. I suspect in Mvula's case he would not be treated with much respect and would be probably given a hard time whereas Tingana I'm pretty sure she knows that that is the male that basically produced her cubs. What's going to be interesting is whether or not we see Tingana a lot more than what we have because she is here with cubs. Now I suspect and it does happen with male leopards is that when they have a female that's got cubs there's this interest factor and we've seen it with lions too with Mfumo and Tinyo though and even in Suku and Nena that they spend a lot of time with the prides that have newborn cubs and I think it's the exact same thing with leopards. I find that the males are intrigued and they tend to patrol that area a lot more in those first few weeks. Are you going to call them? What's she bending down? Is their little cub going to show its face? Come on. Look at this. She's going down and you can see she's... It looks like she's sniffing at something there so I wonder if there's not a little cub. Come on little one. Now, my heart is beating at a million miles an hour because it almost looks as though there's a little cub somewhere close to her feet. And just with the lip of the mound, we just can't see that little one's face. But I have a funny feeling that that cub is not far from her at all. I can't hear anything because of the sound of the rain and the drops of water. I can't pick up anything. But I'm super, super, super nervous and excited. I don't know why I'm nervous, but at the end of the day, it's one of those things. You can see she's watching us a little bit more carefully now, and I think that she's realized that the little ones are a bit more exposed than what they were. The way that she just bent down like that and sort of, it was typical of a mom that was just inspecting her little ones. I've seen it before with mothers, but look at her. Don't worry, my girl. We're not anyone to worry about. We're not going to leave you alone today. Like I say, I mean, once, we, once we've established, and, and now we pretty much can say that there is a den site here. The fact that James saw her here last night, I've seen her here. Now we can safely assume that this is a den site and therefore zone the area from today. I, I don't think there's any need to actually visit, visibly see these cubs after this morning. If we don't get to see them now, I think we'll pretty much leave her alone and let her just enjoy this den site. The last thing we want is for her to move because she feels pressured in this area. We also don't want to attract the attention of various other predators. And so off-roading around here, doing any of that kind of thing is just not the right thing to do. And so what we'll do is basically just close it from this morning. If she, I mean, if she doesn't have cubs, it will soon become apparent she'll leave this area and we won't see her. But this behavior is very indicative of a female that's given birth in a mound. And like I say, I know with Tandy she does give birth in mounds. I've seen her with cubs in mounds before and so it seems as though this is a place that she likes to kind of utilize and the only thing that surprises me is I would have thought that she would have used a mound closer towards the drainage line that was a bit less visible. 
Misty Lane, you're wondering how many cubs Tundi has raised to adulthood. Well, I mean, obviously adulthood is a, is a relative term, but if we talk about how many cubs she's raised to the point where she's left them alone, then we're looking at four. So Wabi Yiza was the first one, and then she had Bahuti, then she had Kuchava, and then she had Tamba. Now, of the four of them, Wabi Yiza unfortunately was killed by the Styx Pride, and then you had... Um, Bahuti, who just disappeared, we, they, they think he distributed into Manuleti, but no one's 100% sure where he ended up. Obviously, we know Kuchava is still around and is mating, and, and that lineage hopefully will continue. And then, obviously, little Tumba is still in this area and still moving around. And it makes so much sense why Tumba is spending so much time now down at Chitwa and Nets, those areas, is because I'm pretty sure Mom was very firm with him and pushed him away quite quickly once she realized she was pregnant. It's also very interesting to see how quickly she mated this time around. It's, it was a very fast turnaround between Tumba and this new set of cubs that she's potentially got inside this den. How amazing is this? Sally, you're wondering if the rain could cause her to move dens. It's possible, Sally. It depends on what the, the structure is inside there. If there's a, a situation where there's a bit of flooding taking place, then most certainly um, leopards do actually get uh, lose cubs quite regularly to downpours of rain, particularly if they've used a termite mound, floods the mound, and obviously those little babies are not able to climb out of it, and they unfortunately drown. So it has happened. I think we, we suspect that it, that's what happened to Shadow once in 2012. She was denning in a termite mound, and unfortunately, Unfortunately, it seemed as though when we went the next time after the big deluge of rain in 2012 floods, those cubs were gone. So I think that's exactly what happened to her cubs, unfortunately. So if it starts to, if she starts to see water running in there, she probably will move them. Uh, where she'll move them to, I'm not quite sure. I'm surprised, like I said, that she's using this particular termite mound. It's quite an exposed mound given all the options she had. I mean, she had a lot of different places that she could have gone to. And what interests me and, and what sort of... I want to know is where was she born because this is something that I'm quite intrigued in and, and the reason why I ask is because at the end of the day this is not the first female that I've seen that's gone back to her natal ter area and back into where she was born to give birth and I wonder if Karula didn't use somewhere in this area to have her and Shadow it would be interesting to know exactly where I did ask Aubrey he said to me he couldn't really remember he remembers it being somewhere in this northeastern corner of um, Juma, but he couldn't remember the exact location and I wonder if she hasn't used the exact same place that she was a cub. It would be super interesting to know that and whether or not she was born in a similar area and whether or not she's now we learned that from being a cub where it was safe for her that she's going to then utilize it. It's, it's an interesting thing and something that I'm not 100% sure what the answer to it is but it is pretty f amazing to think that she has it, for the most part come right back into the heart of where she was born to have her litter and, and like I said this is the first time she's ever had a litter here. She's only just established herself in this area as the territorial female for this sort of eastern side of Juma and so it's amazing that she already knows exactly where she wants to go, exactly what she wanted to do. It was as soon as we started to see her mating, she started scent marking in these areas, started to be far more visible and that to me is astounding. You, you would think that a female would have lost that connection with her birthplace after denning in so many other areas and being successful. I mean at the end of the day she's raised cubs so she, she knows that the southern part of her territory was a successful area for her. So Chitwa, Koro, Cheetah Plains, those were all areas that she denned on and she was successful there. So for her to have moved her entire area to den for these cubs is quite fascinating. And then, like I say, it's an interesting take on how leopards move and their psyche as to, okay, what do we do when we're pregnant? Do we go into a situation where we go, you know, back to our natal area if we can, or do they just find a new area? It, it certainly fascinates me, and it's very, very cool. But I'm just wanting a little black face just to peer out of that mound, because that's what they will be. They will be dark, 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 and very difficult to actually see. Bella Rose, um, other animals could potentially smell the scent, something particularly like a hyena or a lion, um, they would be able to easily pick up, um, and, and, and a male leopard, uh, you know, at the end of the day, male leopards are the biggest cause of cubs being killed, they would easily be able to pick up the scent that there is something in here after some time, so the first few times she gives birth, no, you'll have a situation where she's going to struggle quite a lot to be able to find food, but, I mean, to be able to, to sort of 
anybody to find these little cubs. But then you'll have a situation where you know they start to urinate, defecate, then that smell starts to develop, and that's why she needs to move the, the, the dens regularly. If you look at something like a wild dog, they'll move their dens every three weeks, whereas you know a leopard, I find it's not quite as as much as that. Although it depends on what happens around them. So if she's sitting here inside this mound, and three of the Birmingham's walk past, roaring their their heads off during the night, she most certainly will probably move the den to make sure that they don't find her at some point. So, you know, it just depends on, on a lot of things, but yes, predators will be able to smell them. If they pick up her scent going there, they might sniff around. It also depends, obviously, how big that hole is inside that and where those cubs can crawl into. Maybe it's a situation where, you know, lion and hyenas can't actually get to those little ones. So, it's going to be interesting to see. Right, well, I'm going to sit here for a little bit longer. At the end of the day, I mean, we're not impacting her at all. She seems to be fairly relaxed with us at the moment. It's a dreary, overcast, rainy day, and I don't want to move too much while she's sitting at a tension like that. If she goes back down, I'm going to leave, because obviously, like I say, it is a closed-off area. But I'll sit here for a little bit and just see. Maybe we get a visual of these little cubs, maybe we don't, but ultimately this is going to be our best chance to see them before, you know, eight, nine weeks' time. And so we might as well just try and see if we can have a little look for a little bit. Right, but while we do that, let's go to Noel, who's been exploring the reserve and has been trying to check and make sort of rounds and hopefully she's had a little bit of luck. Well guys, we had the most insane thing just happen. So Tundi was sitting, staring at us as she has the whole time and Franklin's came flying over and she leaped up into the air well above her head and tried to grab the Franklin out of the air. You can hear the Franklin's are alarm calling and she this is the Franklin that she almost killed. She grabbed it with one paw but her claws didn't stick and then she fell down back into the mound and that's why she's standing now but she had a serious quick go at those Franklin's. But Senzo, while she's standing, can you just zoom in on her tummy for me please? So I want to see if there are suckle marks. It does look like there is a bit of wetness. Yes, you can see the matted fur. Do you see where there's a bit of fur there that's stuck together? So that is very typical of a female that is suckling. When their fur gets kind of circular and matted, it's from the 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 cub's saliva on her actual teeth and so she's lying back down now and I think she wants to lie down because she wants everybody to keep quiet. I'm sorry girl, it was you that made them all go crazy. That was insane though, she, the way that she jumped up was absolutely incredible. She probably went, I would say, double the height of her body into the air to grab that Franklin. And it was all just a matter of kind of the Franklin came over her head. She wasn't actually stalking it, but it was just that instinct and that reaction that saw her leap into the air like that. Absolutely phenomenal to watch. Okay, Franklin's enough. Leave Tandy alone now. She hasn't killed you guys. Shame. Poor Tandy's now got birds she has to deal with and carry on with. There's a couple babblers making some noise now. Mita, who's eight years old. Hello, Mita. Always nice to hear from you. And you want to know if Hosanna would be dangerous to these cubs or hurt these cubs if they f he continues to follow Tani, I mean Tandi, the way that he has over the last little bit. Um, yes, he could be a threat to those cubs. No, I don't think she's going to allow him to follow her anymore. So I think we're going to have a situation where she's going to be a lot more aggressive towards. Um, Hosanna towards Tumba and those young boys and the days of them following her I think are gone unfortunately I don't think they're going to be allowed unless maybe she's at a kill somewhere and the cubs are not around then you'll find a situation where she probably won't care too much but if she's on her way back to the den she'll do everything she can to lose that male and not lead her back to these cubs and I know Hosanna is still a young boy and so is Tumba but theoretically they could be a danger to those cubs and not because they want to kill the cubs out of you know territorial kind of notions it's just that they're bigger and they and they are stronger and they are playful and you'll find a situation where maybe Tumbo or Hosano would try and play with those little cubs and would hurt them quite badly and it has happened in, in lion prides where the older siblings actually hurt that little cub to the point that it, it can and, and die um, and so that's why she'll try and keep them away as much as possible. That's not to say that it's impossible for this to happen because Mita I've seen myself with my own 
eyes, um, a female leopard with a male of three and a half years old and then, well, three years old and he, she continued to raise cubs, um, new cubs, with that male. So that male was her older sort of sibling and he ended up kind of staying with her and she raised the other two males to adulthood with that male and they all split off together. It was quite something to see. She had, um, like I say, um, you know, these two young males and then this bigger male and then her and the poor female, she had to try and feed this lot was a really difficult situation. She had to spend so much time catching food because the male, you can imagine, I mean, the male, the size of kind of quarantine with two young males around the size of Hosanna and Tamba walking around together. It was not an easy process for her and she was a busy, busy lady and she had to, often you would find her with three, four impala kills hanging in different trees as she would try and feed all of these big boys and the glass and his appetites and so I felt sorry for that poor female she had a she had a tough time of it um, and she eventually actually unfortunately she passed away trying to protect cubs and got hurt by falling out of a tree and 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 that was the end of that so it's not very very pleasant story at all okay Franklin's enough now you've made your point I suppose if I had a leopard claw dug into me I would also be complaining Proud cat mama, you say, you, well, you want to know whether she'll leave cubs if she's hunting, for sure. She's not going to stay here. She's not going to get food delivered to her, unfortunately. So that's why she selects places like termite mounds or banks of riverbeds or thick, dense areas where she knows she can hide those cubs with very little sign of anything being there. And so that's why she does it. She then will leave this area like when James found her yesterday. She probably had gone for water and maybe hunting, and she then comes back to suckle them once she's done. Once they reach about three months old she'll then start taking them to carcasses for the first time at that stage they're able to start climbing and to start moving and so she would have a situation where she can start kind of taking them towards carcasses and, and, and getting them onto food itself but for now it's a situation where she's got to go off do the hunting get the nutrients for herself and then come back and be able to suckle those cubs now the direct sort of relation between what she feeds on and, and the nutrients of her milk is not really there but she needs to stay strong and healthy and fit in order to protect cubs and so she needs to constantly be feeding and that means she does need to leave the den site to go into that area but amazing to see and what what astounds me about this is that James and Steph and myself the three of us have all walked past this termite mound in the last few days we've all kind of gone around this area we followed tracks for Tundi here many times and we've walked around that actual den now I shudder to think what would have happened had we come across here and she had been inside there and saw us she would have not been very happy at all so it just goes to show you've got to be very careful when you find female tracks around termite mounds then when you know they're pregnant at the end of the day it's a situation where you've got to be a little bit wary of what's inside that mound and don't just go walking up to holes without actually checking first that there's not a track going in that direction so it's an interesting kind of study and, and one that we will have to be a little careful of when we do these things in the future and, and especially now with Tundi being around if we see her tracks around termite mounds it's going to be a situation where we have to be very careful now it seems as though our Mara crew has sorted out their gremlins. Okay, Franklins. Oh, they are so loud this morning. Have sorted out their gremlins and are back up and running with us. And Miss McCurdy in her fancy boots, I'm sure, is out and about in the Maasai Mara and wants to say good morning to all of you. Very easy. She's not really doing too much other than just looking around and kind of having a little squiz as to what's going on in the world. Now, unfortunately for us, as much as we would like to leave her to her own devices, we seem to have encountered a gremlin within Jigga, and Jigga does not want to drive at all, and so we're stuck here, and unfortunately, until such time as she decides she would like to move or go disappear into the den itself that I can just get a quick tow rope onto me and pull me out so we're just going to have to enjoy the morning unfortunately it's almost as though the world has decided that the universe has said that you will stay here until such time as we feel fit and so <laughs> we are just going to sit for a while I, it's, I think it's just a bent steering arm so we'd maybe be able to get it right but maybe she's gonna if she rolls to her side maybe we'll hear her calling and that will ask will basically attract the little cubs to come out and suckle it'll be interesting to see what she does I, I mean, the weather's not great. It's cold. It's rainy. Is she calling? No. Not yet. Come on now, girl. Show us your little ones. You can see she's still kind of looking around, still making sure. I think these cubs are fairly new. I mean, I reckon that they can't be more than... 
more than a week old. So, I mean, these must be, I would say, three, four days at most. I mean, given the tracks that were going in and out of here, it was about that amount of days since we started seeing the tracks at this particular termite mound. So three days, I mean, that's nothing if you think about it. And those little ones will still, like I say, be struggling to move around. Even at a week old, they're still very tiny. So we're going to have to have a situation where we'll have to leave them alone at some point and try and see where they pop up eventually. a territorial claim. I, I think it's more that she wants this territory, yes, because it's a situation where she grew up in this area. She knows this area intimately as a cub. Um, it's, it's perfect terrain and habitat for a female leopard. You've got water, you've got a drainage line, you've got thickets, you've got termite mounds, you've got pretty much everything that you need in order to be able to, you know, survive. And so I think it's a very wanted piece of land. And, and the fact of the matter is, come on, call for us. If we start hearing her making the chuffing sound, then we can be very, very, very excited. I think, though, she's starting to yawn. I think she's going to go away from the den now. I don't think she's going to sit here much longer. I think she's going to get up and walk. But anyway, I, I digress. But, you know, it's a situation where she's it's prime habitat for her, and so it's prime places for her to den. She knows as a cub she was raised successfully here, um, and so at the end of the day, she would want to move into this area as well. She's still watching around. Like I say, she is yawning quite a bit. She is sort of quite alert. I don't think, like I say, that she's going to spend too much time here. I think she's going to be up and moving. Maybe she's going to go off hunting for the morning. The conditions are right for a leopard to be able to hunt. Or she's going to go back deeper into that mound itself. But she keeps looking over her shoulder as though she can hear the little noises in there. I can't hear anything at the moment. She's just sniffing the wind a little bit. No, here we go. I think she's going to leave now. But you can see the little suckle marks most definitely on her. There you go. You see? There's the suckle marks that I was talking about. The milk is there. She's going into that little thicket. I don't think she's going to call these cubs out at all. I think it's a situation where she's still very nervous of them being out and about in the world and so her behavior is rather to go into the den to suckle them than to be able to call them to come suckle on her so you know in a place where there's a den site where she can't get to them that's when she calls them out but in a situation like this where she can actually get to that den site then you'll find that she's probably rather going to leave them inside there or she's going to go tuck herself up in the top let's see maybe not maybe she'll come back down but i don't think so i think she's decided it's time of the day to start maybe moving around a little bit but she's definitely got cubs in here there's no doubt about it and so we'll definitely zone this area now even if we don't have a glimpse of them that's okay um, at least at the end of the day we know that she's on juma now we know that she's denning we should probably find a lot of signs of her over the next few weeks in all of these areas so we'll just have to keep this particular section closed for now so but there she goes. Hey, just you're asking how large are the zones when when it comes to dens and how far do they get blocked off? Well, it, normally we try and use roads that are very close. And I mean, this one is pretty much on a road. So we would basically just block off the section between Gari Cutline and Hyena Road. That's at a fair distance on either side. It's about two, 300 meters either way of the den, um, which is more than enough at the end of the day. As long as we're not creating a system where we're coming to the den site all the time, then it's okay. So there we go. I think she's going to start moving off now. You see, she's She's just kind of disappearing down the mound itself and it's not the worst thing for us because like I say I'm not going to be able to follow her through this and at the end of the day I can get my car fixed and we can carry on with our morning but see she's still sniffing around there let's just give it a little bit she might come back towards the mound I, I don't think so though like I said I think it's that time of the day now where she's going to start getting going and moving it looks like it's what it is let's see there we go, yeah. She's moving off now, so she's starting to go away from us and starting to disappear from the den site itself, which is fine. It's, at the end of the day, the best thing, and like I say, we'll be able to catch up with these cubs at some point. I'm sure we're going to bump into them somewhere along the line as she moves dens or something like that. But while we kind of try and figure out our car and maybe try and even keep up with Tundi for the rest of the morning, let's go. Maybe not go back to Noel because Noel has got a black screen now. And now she doesn't have a black screen, so... 
today. Still have Tundi. We got, managed to get Jigger somewhat working. It's not great. And we were sitting on the road waiting for help, and she just popped out right next to us. So um, it's quite nice. We're just going to sit here and watch her as she goes on her business. I'm not going to be able to follow her for long, but at least I can try and see if we can keep up with her. Now, the problem is, is I've got a roof on, so it's difficult for me to position myself. But she's straight down below the sort of tree there she's behind that so we should be able to see a tail popping out at some point that's where she is unless she's found a bit of water and is drinking there but the problem is for me is that i'm gonna have a situation oh, there she comes she's just coming out on the other side hello girl so like i say she just literally popped out right next to us the impala's all scattered and she came out now i wonder if she's gonna head back towards her den you can see she's got the tail up and raised and is kind of walking around now unfortunately there's no ways that i can follow her to where she's going i don't have the vehicle that's able to do this right now it's still not fixed properly we have to replace the entire um steering arm and so we're going to just watch her disappear back into the thickets but i thought might as well just show you one last look if she was walking around she seems to be on a serious mission so from a very static slow start to her morning she's now up and going and look at how that tail is raised that white flag is up to tell everyone i'm not hunting you leave me alone and off she goes into the drainage system again so it was one brief little look and i hope that you enjoyed it right now i've got to try and get out of here somehow so that i don't end up being stuck because i don't want to be stuck so the problem with a steering arm is that your car doesn't really turn very well you can hear it will shudder as i turn and so it's going to really struggle and if i reverse it's a little bit difficult because the car doesn't actually turn like it's supposed to when you're reversing so you've got a situation where you've got to kind of do 45 point turns it's also not good for the tires because you're hitting the tires up against the chassis of the car you're also just bending the steering rod even more which puts strain on all the struts and everything else so it's really not a good idea to drive a car too much like this so i wouldn't recommend it so it was just a quick brief straight line that we were following so it was okay as long as you can keep fairly straight then you've got a situation where everything will be all right but what we're going to do is try and replace the steering arm quickly while we're out here while we do that and then we can try and kind of get back to tundi i I have a feeling she's heading towards um, Chelapan, that area, so hopefully I'll be able to kind of just pick her up on that side and we can carry on with our morning as she goes off hunting. It'll be nice just to follow her as she goes. I think she's hungry. I think she's going to be looking for food. She was trying to stalk the impalas here, but as she kind of popped out, they saw her and, and, they, and they started alarm calling at her straight away. So um, I think she is hunting and, and it'll be good to try and catch up with her again fairly shortly. So that's what we're going to try and do. I'm just going to try and leave this area. I just want to tell Tax what's going on because he was going to come this direction. But obviously I can't follow much further than where I am right now. So... Just trying to look for the easiest way out the problem is any bumps or s sort of taps or anything like that is a bit of an issue as well so just trying to find a nice clean exit out of this area yeah tax she went into the drainage i can't drive there i've got a spin steering arm so if she just headed straight uh, east from where i am if you drop into the shkova and then just head a little south you'll find her there so i was just giving Taxin a little update as to where she went and so while I chat to Tax quickly and just help him out to be able to find Tandy let's go back across to Taylor Mac with her beautiful boots in the Mara and I'm not creepy I just know her too well that she was going to use those boots and carry on wearing them over the last couple of days but I'm sure they will be helpful in the wet weather.